David Luiz's career has been full of incredible ups and downs, from winning the Champions League with Chelsea to captaining Brazil in that infamous 2014 World Cup on home soil, the man has had quite a story. He divides opinion among fans. During his high days, some loved his personality and character, while others were always terrified every time the ball went in his general direction. Do you remember Gary Neville in one of his more famous quotes on Sky Sports, likening his defending to that of a player controlled by a 10-year-old on the PlayStation? That is the David Luiz many knew. One minute, he is the best defender in the world, and the next, he is committing embarrassing mistakes. His last European stint at Arsenal almost stripped him of the high regard many fans held him, and we wonder, what exactly happened to David Luiz? The defender's rise to the top was quick, from being spotted at Vitoria by Benfica as a teenager to leading Benfica to the Portuguese league, Luiz had the qualities to become the very best. He was dubbed the next Lucio, a marauding free-spirited warrior. Luiz always played with a smile, and his signature curly hair meant it was hard to miss him any time he was on the pitch. At Benfica, under Jorge Jesus, he was the vice-captain, playing a key role in that triumphant season when the club won their first league title in five years featuring in almost all games. He made a name for himself, particularly with his trademark bursts forward from the heart of the defense, showing true traits of a classy, accomplished midfielder with incredible passing and long balls. He had the technique of any lead midfielder with a deadly shoot in his boot. Despite Benfica improving week in, week out, it was clear the Brazilian was using the club as a stepping stone. He was coveted by Europe's top boys, but Chelsea had an ace in the hole. They made an offer that included player plus cash swap, and it did the trick. The London club and the Premier League provided a chance to Luis to solidify his fledgling reputation as one of the world's best defensive prospects. He announced his arrival in London in style. First, he conceded a last-minute penalty against Fulham on his full debut, before scoring a one-time volley against Man United soon after as Chelsea ran 2-1 to -one winners. He was Brazilian after all but he could have easily been shown red for a couple of dubious challenges on the day. Unknowing to many Chelsea and Premier League fans, this is the Luis they would become accustomed to for a number of seasons, but to Chelsea faithful, he instantly became a cult hero. His attitude towards the beautiful game, infused with a cheeky personality, was something to be admired. He also represented an upcoming breed of modern-style centre-back. He possessed great ability in the air, and despite standing at 6'2", he showed confidence in his ability with the ball at his feet. Despite these strong attributes, Luis had his shortcomings. His attacking tendencies and overall positioning often left a gap to exploit when the ball was further up the field, and it did not take long before opposition players found this weak point. Remember Neville saying he played like someone controlled by a 10-year-old on a PlayStation? Now you get the picture. So it never came as a surprise when, despite the trophies and plaudits in the Premier League, it started falling apart for the Brazilian. His flaws were constantly highlighted in the media, and referees wised up to the worst of his antics. Who can forget that particular moment at Old Trafford in 2013? With Chelsea leading 1-0 and one minute of normal time remaining, Luiz pretended to be injured and rolled around next to the corner flag before winking and smiling at the fans. Of course, he got a free kick. With all the pressure, Luis left for PSG, where he played alongside fellow countryman Thiago Silva. He surprisingly seemed to mature, somehow, eventually winning eight trophies in two years with the Paris-based club. He loved the Paris-based club, and the club loved him back. But just like his time at Chelsea, he had moments to forget, including one during a Champions League clash against Barcelona, when they had the famous MSN, Messi Suarez and Neymar. Suarez, at his peak, was a nightmare, and on that night, he destroyed Luis with two nutmegs and also managed to score. PSG were beaten, and so was Luis. He soon packed his bags again. He had unfinished business in London, and he made a shock return in 2016. As expected, the return of the famous Afro drew a mixed response from fans and the media, but this time, he proved the doubters wrong. He perfectly fit into the Blues' backline, commanding his role with more discipline than expected using his talents to play dangerous passes from the safety of his own half. He formed part of a three-man defense that was the foundation of the club's success as they were crowned Premier League champions under Antonio Conte. The Brazilian had finally matured into one of the very best in the league, and he remained at the peak until one of his former teammates, in Frank Lampard, took over at the bridge and things changed. Somehow, he was forced out, 
and he chose to remain in London at Arsenal. And this is when things started going from fair to worse. Well, before leaving Chelsea, his game had started to deteriorate, and it got even worse at Arsenal. No one would understand what was happening. He had always managed to bounce back from difficult moments, like the Suarez moment, for instance, or even the 7-1 loss to Germany during the World Cup, where he cried uncontrollably. His determination and resilience always saw him bounce back time and time again. But his time at Arsenal was a completely different story. In his three seasons at Chelsea before his move to Arsenal, he did not give away a single penalty. But in his first season at Arsenal, he conceded four penalties, twice as many as any other player. And many will remember that match against Manchester City, a horrendous performance from the Brazilian. In total, he conceded six penalties and got three red cards during his time with the Gunners. Luis's qualities best suit a team that dominates in possession, and that's what Arsenal provided. But he failed to fit in, and the Gunners struggled to play the Arsenal way, partly thanks to the Brazilian. Despite his shortcomings, the defender was a big game player. You could argue that his best two games as a Gunner came in his two most important games as Arsenal beat Chelsea in the FA Cup final. Despite the constant mockery from all quarters, you don't win every domestic title in three different countries and two Europa League trophies and a Champions League without being good at your job. Luis made a living out of proving people wrong, and you get the feeling he enjoyed doing it. And after a two-year stint at Arsenal, he returned to his home country where he currently plays for Flamengo, as he sees out his career away from the media that made and, to some extent, destroyed him. When all is said and done, technically, Luis was one of the best defenders in the Premier League. His ability has never been in question, nor his commitment to the cause. Instead, it has always been his mentality and temperament that has appeared to have been the problem, and it somehow held him back during the early stages of his traveled career. Perhaps unbeknownst to Gennaro Gattuso, he best sums up the central defender, an utter calamity one day and an elegant brick wall the next. What were your best David Luiz moments? Let us know in the comments.